Welcome to the Her Podcast. I'm Megan. I'm CJ. And I'm Erica. We are exploring purpose and connection in business and life through our very own honest everyday ramblings. Today, we are so happy to have Tammy Zadunik with us. Tammy is a master photographer, co-founder of Inner Illum Photography Retreats, founder of The Well Collaborative, mother, and all-around beautiful and inspiring human. She is a champion of women. Connection and building community are two of her greatest gifts. She is known for creating opportunities for intentional connection between women and encouraging us all to be our authentic selves. Conversations with Tammy are always so beautiful, authentic, and honest. We cannot wait to get into it. So let's do it. No notes, Tammy. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> We're going to sing the whole podcast. We can Hell if you want. Can. We're here for it. Yeah. Go ahead. We, I'll maybe be you now. always wanted to have a, a career in singing, and now's your opportunity. <laughs> Never. No, thank you. Okay. What did you think Nervous you were going to be when you were younger? Photographer. Did you, did you always know? Actually, I was going to be a model slash hairdresser. <laughs> hairdresser. <gasps> Sla- I was a hairdresser. That's right. So slash, was I. Slash everything. Fun. Just like I do. That's how I love that you knew. You just knew it. You just knew I'm going to do all the things. Good to be on a stage, obviously. <laughs> Is that and what you wanted to be? Was on a stage? Yes. Yes. Singing? No. No. What did you want to do on that stage? Dancing. Dancing. Well, I was a dancer. Okay. Big, big time. Yeah. Tell us about that. Oh, okay. <laughs> what kind of dancer? Well, I did it all. I was about to be like, should we all guess? Should She's we guess all, what kind of dancer time? Mm. I'm feeling like some interpretive stuff Belly was dancer. happening. No. Oh, no. lyrical. I was like a trained, you know, ballet, oh my lyrical, goodness. jazz, oh, that's a little amazing. bit of tap, not a lot of tap. Okay. And I, do you still dance? At home. But no, it's okay. quite sad. I Dancing was my mm. favorite thing ever. Yeah. Why did you stop? I danced till I was 19. And then, well, funny story. I... After I had kids, I kind of stopped. I would just dance with my kids at home. But a few years ago, I thought, I'm going to get back into dancing. So I took a really fun dance class, and we were doing some pretty intense Shakira hips. Oh, yeah. I literally hurt my piriformis around my sciatica and couldn't walk. Get out. Mm -hmm. What's a piriformis? It's like a deep muscle in your glute, Mm. and it comes right up against your sciatic. (gasps) Oh no. So then I just kind of like stepped back from it then. But oh. I think I'll maybe just go to Zumba class. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm curious with dancing, what was that like growing up as a dancer? Because I know the dance community. I'm sure you didn't think you'd be talking about this, but I'm just like so curious about that environment and what it was like being a dancer. Because I feel like there's a lot of, or maybe there was, I don't know, I wasn't a dancer, the narrative around your body image and what you should be eating all of that. I'm interested in what you felt that was like growing up and the structure around it. Well, I think it was just a bit different for me because I grew up in a small town (gasps) in Keniston and Moose Jaw. Tammy, I grew up in Moose Jaw. Like that's my hometown. Have we never had, have we had this conversation? I don't okay. think so, but I okay. know that you were there, and I went to Sitter. <laughs> She's but so I'm older she's than you. Oh, we went to Door Sitter School of Dance. Everybody okay, so knows Peniston was very non-toxic dance. Very fun. Just We brought our teachers in from Saskatoon, and although I did have this really mean teacher who I did, she wouldn't let us go pee, so I did pee on her. Oh. I did pee on her, but I was like four. What? Also so put in a point since she was four years old, I was old, like, this gal. you're not going to let me go pee? Don't worry. I'll just pee right here. What I am I it. supposed to do? Like, like a kid. Yeah. Good for you. I got to pee. I got to pee. You yeah. know, like, what do we say at the well? Like January was, you have a body. Yeah. So if you need to go pee, you should go pee. Yeah. You should not hold your pee. Yeah. That is a good topic to talk I about. Hold my, topic. No, I hold my pee. I notoriously hold my pee. Yes. Our farts for way too long. <laughs> yes, I took it there. I'm so okay, sorry. So farts change when you get older after you've had three babies. So yes. let's not even talk about farts because that's a whole, that's not even a New choice podcast anymore. Topic. That's not a choice. Yeah. Peeing is a bit more of a choice. <laughs> for some. For some. Right? <laughs> Guys, no, I, I went to Apex. I should not tell this story. <gasps> I went to Apex. Why? What is Apex? our youth group? A trampoline oh. park. Okay, okay, okay. You guys. I all the kids were like, Erica, get on the trampoline, and I was like, fine. So I got on the trampoline, one bounce. 
<laughs> and I was like, I have something has occurred involuntary we have a leakage we on aisle have three. a problem <laughs> one bounce on trampoline three, three. one bounce <laughs> on trampoline three. could everyone please exit trampoline three we have like, a leakage clean up i, I bounced clean i up. came down and i was like okay and i just like everyone's like erica keep going and i was like oh no it's for you guys and i like stood there and was like something has oh no houston so, we have a problem oh man i anyway I, sorry i keep going no, i great. feel like kegels is like my life like i'm doing them right now so okay back to the story of dancing yes like we sorry. should get back to dancing yes, yes where we were. Go back. so we do have to do our kegels if we're going to properly dance mm. oh. so that we don't pee when we dance yes. Okay. yes yeah just just bring that into it working wanna, around okay you. i want to hear about this dancing though you had a mean teacher you peed on her <laughs> which is amazing i love this keep story. going <laughs> me too so that was caniston dance school of dance i guess <laughs> anyways then i moved to moose jaw and i danced at sitter and that woman was scary <laughs> that studio was much scarier than my little hometown studio and i think there was probably a lot of eating disorders mm-hmm. yeah and mean girl stuff mm-hmm. that went on there and so i was only there for a few years how did you handle that i think i was just young enough um, maybe to not really notice. I think I realize now probably what was going on, but I didn't really, I just wanted to dance so bad. You I yes. had to pay for my own classes okay. from babysitting. <gasps> my parents didn't have a lot of money and yeah. that was like crazy interest rates, 15 plus percent interest rates on houses at that time. So mm. we, I think I had to pay $80 a month for my own. So this was like 30, Which 30 years ago. More That's than like a decent amount, mm-hmm. right? Because yeah, how much would you earn babysitting? Like I had to babysit a lot. I yeah. feel like I don't yeah. remember a lot of that. I think okay. I got a bit of allowance, but all my money went into dance. So I think that because it wasn't, I wasn't like of able to just, it wasn't easy. I didn't take it for granted. Mm-hmm. I didn't care about that. I just wanted to do my best. And then I got asked to go into another class too, because I was doing well in the class I was in. So Yes, I did. And I don't remember having to pay for that. I think it was like an extra thing. So I just really appreciated that I could do that. I never felt like I wasn't like the rich kid in Moose Jaw. I was friends Mm -hmm. with a lot of the rich kids. My dad always says like champagne tastes on a beer budget. That's Tammy. Uh, Yeah. That's Tammy. That's Erica. That's everybody here. (laughs) Everybody here is like, give me that champagne. I'm like like, bottom shelf champagne. (laughs) Like when it's on sale, we buy champagne. (laughs) Yeah. Actually, it's Prosecco. <laughs> Prosecco, you Let's guys. be honest. Yeah. Yeah. From Costco. <laughs> we don't drink champagne. We drink Prosecco. <laughs> Let's be clear. What I think is interesting, actually, is how you're talking about, you know, you had to babysit and you had to pay for it yourself at su- such a young age, which is really investing in yourself. And do you think that has just been something that's been now a part of your entire life, has been investing back into yourself? And being willing to work hard for it. Yeah. I mean, I've never expected anything from anyone. Mm. Yeah. So I have a hard time understanding that mentality. I'm always super, super appreciative of anything that is offered or comes my way. And I don't in any way expect it. The whole entitlement thing is very strange to me. Mm -hmm. But I grew up poor, having to fight for anything I wanted. And my parents, we were always on a budget. Mm-hmm. So at Dairy Queen, we had like a $2 budget. Mm-hmm. So we could never oh. get a blizzard, mm-hmm. but we could get a dipped cone and we could get a Sunday, a small yes. one. Yeah. So things like that. So yeah. I feel like I do invest in myself, but I just really appreciate anything that comes my way. I'm probably to the other extreme of just really hard on myself mm-hmm. and really kind of undeserving. I probably mm-hmm. lean more that way. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That Mm -hmm. absolutely makes sense. So going forward now for like your children, Mm -hmm. right? Like what are you trying to instill in them? I mean, we definitely have a budget. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I want them to, I, I, I say no, I'm not like a yes mom. Yep. Um, they work hard. I have a hard time because I feel all their feelings. Mm. So when I'm not able to be hard, you know, make them do something that is uncomfortable for them then I have to let my husband handle that. I don't do that part. Because if my kids don't want to do something because it's uncomfortable, I have a hard time making them. So it is funny. Like as much as my upbringing was, I did, we didn't have money, so I had to work for things. I also didn't have to do the dishes growing up ever. Yeah, mm-hmm. I never really got in trouble if I didn't clean my room. So yeah. I was spoiled. My mom always said, you know, we don't spoil you with things, but we spoil you with love. Mm-hmm. So my mom definitely um, enabled my like bad 
cleaning Mm. or am I not having, keeping this like really great house. So I think I enable my kids that same way. I just want them to like, can we just cuddle? Yeah. Don't worry about the dishes. Let's just cuddle. And I don't not that way, but I I also need to learn to do the dishes. My kid is seven and I'm like, he's the garbage is bigger than him. And I'm like, you are now strong enough to wheel that out. Go buddy. (laughs) That's why I feel like I can't parent alone. Like, Mm. my husband brings Mm. that part. Same. But I, because of, I think, being an entrepreneur, I mean, you girls are going to relate to this. So you're, there's just so much happening all Mm. the time. I, I, I fail. Like, I give myself a fail a day. So when the kids were younger, it might have been like, oh, I forgot that they had a play date after school. Or, oh, I forgot that they like their lunch. (laughs) Yeah. So I would kind of give myself one free pass a day yeah. with the kids. And I, I feel that. like doing that made them, so whether this is harmful or good, they now have to be in charge of things like, like they don't necessarily count on me with laundry. Are their clothes cleaned? Are there, is the food that they want in their lunch? They have to be responsible for it. So I'll yeah. like do my best, but then my shortcomings have kind of helped them become responsible humans already like jack's been doing his laundry since he was 10 love it well i was gonna say like my mom i think had a mentality that was like um if you want it done differently then you do it so you know like if we were like oh we want you to this shirt needs to be hung to dry mom she'd be like great here's how you do the laundry like i'm i'm your stuff's going in the dryer unless you want otherwise if you don't like the stuff i buy for lunch feel free to take your allowance and go buy stuff for lunch I she was very like that. yeah she was very like that i am very cut and dry like that mm-hmm. but that's for me about capacity mm. well and i feel like even just saying what you've said about growing up like my mom would have grown up very similar um even probably a little bit more and so that's probably that mentality a little bit when you have less you're grateful for what you have and then when your kids come along and are like what do you mean you got me gushers and not scooby-doo snacks she's like oh let me tell you something (laughs) go buy your own (laughs) go buy your own treats i love bullshit (laughs) (laughs) she's like she's like we didn't have these (laughs) well totally i love that you just touched on your capacity which is like my Mm -hmm. favorite topic (laughs) to talk about so i want to ask because you are a full-time photographer you are a founder of retreats you are the founder of the well collab so you build community you have all of these um, other people and women kind of like coming to you and looking to you for leadership Mm because you're a very natural leader and you pour into others so much how do you recognize what your capacity is for those things and how do you manage it I think the number one thing is that I don't try to be something I'm not. So I think that just takes away a lot of internal dialogue. And I think like emotional labor is what really exhausts us more than actually doing things. Mm -hmm. So talking to people doesn't exhaust me if I can be myself, Mm -hmm. if I'm not worried about what I'm saying or what I just said, or do I am, you know, so if I can remove like the emotional work, then I'm not tired. So that's a big part of capacity for me because I think it's just a lot of our internal thoughts that tire us out more mm. than anything else. So being a, being able to be myself. So in every single thing I do, I am able to be myself. And if I can't, then I have to change something. And generally that means asking for help. Mm. So I'm like a huge advocate of asking for help. I but, love that. But look at this. This is what you do. Yeah. This is, this is asking for help. Mm. Not, I have to do it on my own. I need all the glory. It's all about me. It's all about Tammy. I want to remove myself from things. I love build, creating things. And then I'm like, how quickly can I remove myself from this? Mm. Wow. How long did it take you as an entrepreneur to realize that that's what it is that you love? Like, I want to be here and build this and then hand it over. I think I've always kind of done that naturally, but... I think I probably got confused with letting people tell me what they think. Mm. You know, you need to have structure and everything needs to be the same and you need to repeat the same thing every day. I'm like, I will die. (laughs) You are killing me. A slow death. A slow death or a very fast death. (laughs) Maybe For a creative person. Well, I think for a creative, but also because I have mental illness. Mm. So I can't push myself past a certain point that has been such a saving grace I watch women push push themselves because they can 
and because they they're strong and they just push through you know like i think it's definitely man we're touching on so many things but i think it's like the patriarch Mm -hmm. that tells us to push through forget your emotions forget your hormones forget your cycle forget your health your self-care forget everything and just like push through and do the same thing every day i think that's a very very masculine way because men's hormones don't take 20 days to cycle they take a day Mm -hmm. so they're the same every day we're different every day I can't operate any other way so Mm -hmm. people would try to tell me to operate differently and I think that was like their own being told so often when we react culture to that it's something that is inside ourselves that's making us uncomfortable with what someone else is doing right yeah say that again I don't know what I said now (laughs) basically that when we're uncomfortable with someone it's actually ourselves yes and to, to kind of, as, you know, as you to recognize that it's, that's not about me is really powerful. Yeah. That happens a lot in, when you run a community of women of like a hundred members, there's a lot of stuff coming towards you that you have to recognize is not your stuff. Wow. Yeah. You just that's said really so good. many things that I want to talk about now. I'm like, you're obviously your pick one. No, <laughs> your <kidding. laughs> we'll talk your, about it community that you've built of a hundred women, but I'm like, first you talked on mental health, right? And what your mental health journey is. And I would love to know, you know, as someone who doesn't know what your journey is, what that means to you and Mm -hmm. where you're at in that. Yeah. I can give you like the Coles notes. Yeah. Give us as much as you are comfortable giving us. Oh yeah. I'm totally comfortable giving you everything. I just lose track, which is part of my mental health is like, what did I just say? (laughs) Where was I going with that? We got you. Yeah. So I started having like panic attacks and anxiety when I was probably seven or eight, maybe younger. I don't really, I don't really remember that it ever started, just that it was always there. Um, But the panic attacks were quite debilitating. Like at, I would get them at school during exams or I would get them and I would just do the exam Mm -hmm. with it because you don't really know, you, you didn't know what it was. That no, long especially ago. back then no right like there really, was no name there was nothing seriously there was nothing so I had panic attacks and anxiety up till I was all through my high school year like elementary high school and then um I would do things to distract myself I think dance was really really helpful because I was in my body so anytime I get myself in my body so I still practice that a lot I'm always constantly pulling myself back into my physical body and then I'm out of my head and so funny just side note that's why I do photography too without sub I would say subconsciously I'm a photographer I'm an artist because when I'm in that medium and I'm in that zone I'm not in my head and I'm able mm. to be really healthy and it kept me really healthy all those years maybe leading up to a shoot I would be really nervous and anxious and then I would I said, but as soon as I get there and I put my camera in front of my face, I'm protected Mm -hmm. and then I can just shoot. And then I'm, I'm a different person. It's not me. I think it was part of it was like, so as much as I love being in front of the camera and on stage and performing, I don't really want it to be me. I just want to do the thing without having to have the reflect, the accolades or reflection after. Mm. I'm like, can I just express myself? And then can we not talk about it? Cause I just really need to do that Ah. for me. Love that. It's weird. It's it's, it's in weird. everything I do. I want to express, like even right now, I want to like express this. Yeah. But I don't necessarily want to talk about it after. I'm just yeah. good with that. It's, yeah. You're so very I'm, in the moment. Yeah, I'm I'm a very present and I think that comes from a mental illness. I, I just think it does. Mm-hmm. So I think so I had I hit a really serious breaking point in my 18, 19, 20, in that actually up to 23 was quite a serious, those five years. And I was having massive panic attacks every day. Couldn't drive. Um, yeah, couldn't really do anything. And, and at a certain point, didn't, wasn't leaving my house for months. Like in my house, I think I was 22 at that point. And I'd been to the doctor and I'd been talking to people. I actually ended up leaving my job as a hairstylist. Wasn't a healthy environment for me. No, it's not a healthy environment. It's a very hard environment. It's a very hard environment, but also... Well, you're also like on, Mm -hmm. and it's also not necessarily the healthiest culture. I'm hoping it's changed, but what it was at the time, 20 years ago. So I ended up leaving that going, being home. And just, I remember one day, just very specifically this one day of like falling like onto my knees, like with my now husband who we weren't married then and just being like, like, I can't do this anymore. So 
for me, it was a choice like live or die. Like, do I end it, my life, or do I keep going? So I love life. Mm -hmm. Life is so fun. There's so much to offer. It feels so good. There's so many exciting things to do. So I knew that I loved life. I just had to figure out how to deal with this other part. And it was like therapy and medication. And I still do that. I don't do medication right now, but I still do like everything. I'm constantly, it's daily. Growing and evolving, right? And I think sometimes when you're struggling through to put a name and figure out what's going on inside of you, right? Like I'm curious what your process was to try different things once you were in your 20s and going through that really difficult period, right? So like what, I mean, you obviously touched on dance and like movement, but like what, I don't know if you do meditation or like, you know what I mean? Like what does self-care look like for you and how did you start exploring that? Like did you start reading books? Like did your doctor advise that? Did friends advise that? You know, was there starting to have like articles come out about those types of things? Like everything. (laughs) I think like all of it. There wasn't a lot of articles and there wasn't a lot of education and it was very much like shameful Mm -hmm. to have, you know, generalized anxiety disorder, panic disorder. Why do you have that? You know, but from a certain aspect of it, it was shameful. And then, but I was just like told people right away if I wasn't well. So I feel like community was how I healed or it's a process, um, you know, even with healing. So bringing people into my illness helped me a lot. So talking about it and I, no one was talking about it when I was talking about it, just talking about it randomly, like on the bus, if I was having a panic attack with the person sitting behind me. Well, and I think that's, so many things in life, when we give a name to something, we actually a lot of time take away the power Mm -hmm. because when we can't describe something, we're not able to make it normal. And as soon as something's normal, it's actually not scary anymore. Right. But it's that unexpected. We don't know what this is. We don't even know what to call it. So we're just going to like say Tammy's having a a little thing going on over there. And then it's like, but as soon as you can be like, no, she's having a panic attack and this is like actually common. And this is your, you've actually probably experienced one yourself, right? Like we can all, be less scared of it and identifying it, I think is actually really powerful. Yeah, I think so too. I don't, I'm okay with labeling. I know there's a Mm -hmm. whole like the label debate, but I think it's personal. If it works for you, if it holds you back, that would be a problem. If I'm like, well, I have panic, so I can't do A, B, and C. I'm like, Mm -hmm. I do everything. And while I do it, I tend to have panic attacks and feel like I need to like go to the hospital, Mm -hmm. but I don't, I just breathe through it until it passes. I just go through it instead of like running away from it. Well, and I feel like labeling, I mean, if I can, my own experience, I think labeling gives me a sense of like, not direction, but like, I now know what this, I don't do well when I don't know what's happening. I don't do well when I'm like, don't know what to expect. And I have panic attacks as well. So even being able to be like, this is what occurred. This is what happened. I can almost like put it in a box and be like, okay, I know that happened. Whereas if I hadn't labeled it, you might be like, what is going on with me? And that fear would kind of well up in you a little bit more. You know what I love about that is because you are like, I am not anxiety. You are not anxiety. Yes. I am not an anxious person, yes. but I do have panic attacks sometimes. And I think it's when you say putting in that box, it almost makes it feel like it is separate from you. Mm-hmm. It is something you experience, but it is not who yeah. you are. Actually, my mom just recently, so we're selling our house right now and it's been a thing. Okay. For me, this is a whole new side of me. I never knew existed. And I was on the phone with my mom. I like called her and I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm so anxious. I'm, I have anxiety. And she right away was like, you, that's not yours. You're feeling anxious. And she right away was like, switch the narrative. This is, you're feeling anxious now. You're not anxious. You don't have anxiety. And I'm not against saying if you have anxiety or not, but she's like, you as a person, like, that's not something you know, she really was like, switch the narrative. It's a, it's, it's something you're experiencing right now, but maybe not forever. And I just was like, thanks mom. <laughs> well, I'm like switching <laughs> the narrative moms. or shifting the perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, language is so powerful, mm-hmm. right? So when you say I am X, Y, Z, that's like a power statement, right? Like I am powerful. I am anxious. It can go both ways. So you're defining who you are and how you feel by saying I am. But if you say, I feel anxious, I love that. Well, and Ed Milet talks a lot about like the, the parts of your brain that find 
Oh, I don't know what it is because I'm not going like to know. It was the amygdala. It's like, so, it's, I think you say that every <laughs> you time. You just like to say amygdala. 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 Like, amygdala. I've said it before. I think so. All right. But I think it's saying? it's the part of your brain that looks for what you're, what you're believing about yourself and what you're saying, right? So if you're like, I have anxiety, your brain is naturally going to look for that. 100%. But if you're like, I'm, you know, this is, or right now, or this is a season and you almost like, and you say it a lot, like flip it. Right. You're like, how do I flip this to make it not be negative or whatever? So that's a little thing I'm learning. (laughs) Well, it's a constant. Yes. It's not something that you just always do. Like even this morning, somebody parked in my parking spot and I was like walking the whole way here. I'm like, I'm trying to decide how I'm going to feel about this. I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do because I don't like calling and giving people a ticket. But like, that's my parking spot. How do I feel about this today? You know, you got to decide like it's and it's also to reaction versus responding. But I think you have to have time. Yeah, I think that's what people don't have. And that's why we react so much because we don't have time or we think we don't have time. Sure. We don't take the time. Yeah, because sometimes Mm -hmm. we do like we don't you know, I always say way to beat. So sometimes I wait a beat before replying to an email that maybe I didn't love the tone of or something. (laughs) So you just like wait a beat because if I didn't, if I responded right in that moment, I was, I'm actually reacting instead of like my response may be different than my reaction. Okay, you guys, it's CJ here. I don't know if any of you out there are like me, but when I get ready for the day, I gravitate towards things that are quick and easy to style. I'm a creature of habit, and I love items that are timeless and can easily be worn multiple ways, which is why I'm so obsessed with Megan's jewelry line, Elizabeth Lynn. I recently picked up the Echo Huggies, and honestly, you guys, I couldn't choose between the black and the clear, so you know I had to get both. And shout out to my girl, Erica, who came through with the cutest styling recommendation and suggested I rock one black and one white for a completely unique look. Elizabeth Lynn Jewelry is designed for intentional everyday wear. And if you're anything like me and love pieces that are both trendy and timeless, you need to do yourself a favor and go check out Elizabeth Lynn Jewelry today. P.S. The Remix Collection just dropped and you guys, these pieces would make the perfect Christmas gift for the gal pals in your life. Do yourself a favor and head over to elizabethlynn.ca or check them out over on socials at Elizabeth Lynn Jewelry. We even have a discount code specifically for the Her listeners. Use code HER15 to save 15% off your next order. Happy shopping. My beats are actually quite long in I this love, situation. I love a long beat. I, love I a sleep long beat. on things. Erica doesn't. <laughs> I do. I'm like, we're going to iron this out right here, right now. Nick is like, take a second. I'm like, get over here. You're such an Aries and he's such a Pisces. I'm just like, <laughs> I need to fix this right now. And he's like, because I, I can't. I The feeling of something being not right is like just eats at me. I'm like, nope nope, we got to fix it. If it's me that's done something, I can't handle it. And if it's someone who's done something to me, I'm like, now there needs to be justification or there needs to be. Mm. <laughs> but so I, bet you, I bet you get over things quick. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's like, I'm yeah. like, if someone like says that. sorry or something, I'm like, okay, well now we're good. But you needed to say it. <laughs> <laughs> but I needed to hear that. But and I don't wait to be before you is, say it. Which Just is funny. So you know. Yeah. Cause I married someone who is like silent and <laughs> stoic. And I'm like, why can't you just say sorry? <laughs> he's like because he it's to, driving you nuts because he has to feel it first <laughs> yeah. he has to feel sorry before he can say sorry and i understand that oh it's amazing my husband is yes. the same he so am the i same but now i give him the time mm-hmm. because i mm-hmm. can be uncomfortable I, i'm learning to Ooh, be uncomfortable i like that i can sit in my discomfort i don't need to get rid of it it doesn't have to go away it's okay to be uncomfortable mm-hmm. i think well, we mm-hmm. so avoid discomfort we want to be comfortable all the time. And I feel like even with now, when you live in, you know, I grew up in a small town, you're always uncomfortable because you're always with people that have made you uncomfortable or not. And you have to be there. You can't go anywhere in the city. It's like, I'll just go find a new group of friends. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, and uncomfortable, I don't know. I'm sure it's like on some kind of quote in home sense, but I'm also sure I like, read it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like uncomfortable, like in the uncomfortable on the other side of that is usually growth. 
And it's usually Correct. getting you to a place where then you look back and you're like, because you don't grow usually in comfort, really. No, no. you e- never do. You can even equate mm-hmm. it to at the gym. Yep. If you do the same thing every day, you're actually not going to get anywhere. But when you like push yourself into something that's physically uncomfortable, you're like, oh, I can feel my body's doing change here. I actually find that since I started pushing myself more with weightlifting and with running, I am more able to be uncomfortable in emotional situations. Mm. Well, ev- build everything intertwined, right? Yeah. It's so great. That's amazing. I well, like that. body, mind, spirit, right? Or soul or whatever, you, yeah. right? I'm like, it's, it's all, all connected, connected, right? So I wonder if it was actually dealing with my emotional discomfort and be being okay, uncomfortable emotionally that has made me be able to run further. I actually think it might be that. I would agree with that. the opposite of what I just thought it was. Isn't that interesting though? I love an aha moment on a podcast. Yeah. On air. And I was going to say before when you were talking about your emotional labor, but what you were saying is, you know, it's our emotional labor that drains us, which is, I was going to say, well, that's so funny because when I work out, I'm so invigorated because it's not emotional labor, even though it's quite strenuous. Hopefully <laughs> I'm like pushing myself, but you know, and, and so as you're saying this, I'm like, oh yeah, you could almost see how it's so connected that like, as you develop more emotionally, even the physical things you do are going to become easier or more, not bearable, but not as hard, I guess. I don't know how to say that. I feel like the whole culture of working to working out, and this is an older way of doing it, but like past year, like 10 years ago, like working out in order to look a certain way Mm. has so taken away from the actual benefits of working out emotionally and relationally and all these other things that it brings. And when you switch it and you're not working out anymore for your physical, but you're like, sure, that's great. But when you, I think we just, as women for years and years and decades, we've been working out like Jane Fonda Mm. so that we look a certain way. Mm -hmm. But if we, that's great because it's healthy to build muscle. It's awesome for your body and for your longevity. And as you get older, like me, when you're in your forties and you need (laughs) to have your bones strong, you need to Mm -hmm. lift weight and you need to build muscle. But that I have to have that secondary if I'm going to work out, it can't be anything actually about how I look. It has to all be about how it makes me feel. Yeah. Yeah. Because I won't work out if it's about how I look. Yeah. Because I look in the mirror and I'm like, girl, you got it. You're fun. You're great. Yes, you look amazing. You look amazing. And then I'd be like, I don't have to work out. But like, yeah. no. To work out for my blood pressure. Yes. My bone mass. For your health. For my health, my heart, and for my emotional ability to like regulate. Yeah. Be a better human. Your nervous system. Be nice to So people. how much are you lifting? I don't know. You mean oh, like okay. how much Like, weight? yeah, weight. Oh, I don't know. Okay. I did have, I don't even remember what they're called. Great. Because like it's like in ballet. Mm-hmm. Well, you know like when, weights? You know, in like ballet, when you go, you know, like the different Weight moves, lifting. like the different oh. moves, like when you do like, like a plie, like hip thrusts oh. with like, you know, maybe you can do like 175 or 185 hip oh, thrusts. Oh, yes, yes, yes. But like, like, are you up there like barbell that? like this? Yeah. Which they can't see because it's a podcast. No, she's lifting it above her head. Yeah. This, I would be like much lower, like yeah. maybe 75, 80. Good for Not you. Not That's amazing. I know I can lift a, f- I don't even know how big Asher is now, how much he weighs, but I can lift an Asher. That's how I like know I'm strong. I, was I can feeling, lift my child. <laughs> I was feeling you real good strong. about my 12 pounders. <laughs> oh, you know it's different like, when you do the big bar, because the bar is 45. Right. And then you yeah. put on 20, 20, maybe another right. five. So that's like 50. So 95. I would like definitely lift like 95 or like squat. This girl. Squat it. Oh, I could squat it. Girl, you're strong. Yeah. It just it depends what yes. move you're doing. Depends what move you're doing. And, and if Brittany, properly. my trainer, is yelling at me or not, she doesn't <sighs> yell. She doesn't yell. But if she's like, <sighs> do it, she'll just write down the number and it's so much. Or she'll get it ready for me and I just have to go and do it. Yeah. And I like, well, um, like, I won't pass out, but sometimes I feel like I might. So then I like take a second. I take a, a way to beat. beat. I wait a beat. That's amazing. Have you always had a personal trainer? No, I go, I'm in and out and I'm currently out and running instead i'm training okay. for a 10k so i'm currently yeah. not where lifting where well, you where is your run well it's in waska sioux but <gasps> i did that one once yay who are you people running 10k just it's casually. such a beautiful run except <laughs> i stared at my feet most of the time but it is beautiful <laughs> and you know what i'm training for it and i'm giving myself grace i'm up to 6k and i know Abby. i could probably run it without training 
I think yeah, like you train like a certain way. I'm, yes. I'm not an expert. Don't listen to me, but I do have a physiotherapist that I'm working with on running. So that's very, oh, when great. I'm working with people, <laughs> when I was training for that one, I didn't know my treadmill was in miles. So I was running eight miles. That's way further than and 10K. dying and going upstairs and saying to Nick, I can't hit 10 K. Like I'm never going to survive. And then I told my friend and she's like, treadmills are usually in miles, Erica. So I was running eight miles, like almost every day. How many K is that? Like 11. It is. It's like 11.2 or something. And then just crush. I it. wasn't training for Hills cause there's Hills. And my friend was like, Erica, just put your treadmill at a four, like an incline of four. And I was like, okay. And I was like panicked. And then I went to my treadmill and it had been in four the entire time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Look at this beast over no, this. But this is just one of those things that I was like, okay. Like again, great. I ran it. It was fine. I wasn't amazing. I looked at my feet cause I was exhausted and running a hill like this is very hard. But it was, it was, I'm, I have a sweater from it. I loved it. You are amazing because you ran a marathon. That's it. That's <laughs> well, it. Well, at 10K, but yes. Doesn't matter. Yeah. I can't it's run one Are you going to wear a costume? People wear costumes at that thing. Okay. This oh. is the sad part is I paid for the, I paid for it to go there and do it. I'm training, but I actually don't think I can go because no. it's fine though. You know what? It's okay. There's a few here the same weekend, but I have three children who all have activities one has basketball mm-hmm. tryouts one is like roughing he has a job roughing football and then the my daughter plays football too so probably i'll be here but that's okay but i can run a 10k on my own i don't need the crowd i'm okay no. we know you don't but, need the crowd right i'll just do the thing yeah that's where i saw i remember i saw a woman and she must have i'm not good at guesstimating ages she must have been 70 like she had white hair her and her there was like these three little old women and they were dressed up in a costume and they ran it. And I remember being like, that's what I want to be, which it goes back to like training your body for Mm -hmm. the future. Mm -hmm. As I was like, I want to be 70 years old, maybe who knows and running in a 10 K at Waska Sioux. I want to be that healthy. Yeah, you will be. And women tend to become stronger runners after 40. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I don't have any proof or stats on that, but I know that someone <laughs> oh. told me that. So it's true. Great. So I'm going to start running <laughs> that next was year. Our, that was another home sense quote. <laughs> I love it. it is true though, because the girl I trust who I can't remember right now, cause I can't remember who it was, but I know I trusted her and yeah. I was like, this is a trustworthy person telling yeah. me this. So I believe it. Oh, I love that. I love it. It's so good. <laughs> I would, I would love to change directions and I would love to know, you know, I went and perused your website last mm-hmm. night and I was just having a good look at who Tammy is because I haven't had many interactions. The one I have had was beautiful and wonderful and so fast. That's <laughs> Tammy in a nutshell. Beautiful, <laughs> wonderful, and so fast at everything she yeah. does. And she leaves an imprint. <laughs> Literally. But you talk so much about identity and finding identity in women, right? And how just the way you described your process, I was like, I want to hear it from your mouth and how you came up with that and how you walk through that with other women and what that looks like and what it means for you, like how you found your identity. I think, okay, so I believe identity is in us when we're born, before we're born. So I think that I have a very specific view of my identity and I'm a person of faith. So my identity would be that I'm eternal soul and that um, it continues past when I die. And it's, it's a forever thing. So it's not about anything that I do. Nothing that I do can have any impact on my identity mm-hmm. or become my identity. So I think that I really encourage women to dig into their identity and name it for themselves. It doesn't have to look, it doesn't have to be anything that anyone else is saying, right? So you just people, women, men, everyone needs to just kind of do some work on their identity. Because if you, if you know that, then you can stand on that. And it removes the need to, it even makes like with the mental health, like understanding what my illness is and how my physical body reacts to certain situations. That's actually nothing to do with my identity, with who I am. Correct. And I think that there's just so much desire right now to grasp onto something and call that your identity Mm. because people feel lost and hopeless sometimes. And they need something that they can 
grasp onto and call that their own and feel that they can stand on that. And I think that it's all within us, which I know you women would be right. Like, you know, it's like within us. So who are we without anything else? So Mm -hmm. my identity has nothing to do with being a mother Mm -hmm. because that is a choice I made. And that's something I did. That's not who I am. So being a mother can impact my personality and I have a personality that is separate from my identity, but I am this like beautiful, wonderfully made soul that is eternal. And that makes me feel safe and fearless. So even though like in a human form, I will have fear and things will be scary for me that again, that's like something that I'm experiencing, Mm -hmm. but that's not like my forever. That's very deep. Like I, that's like a very deep picture of myself. I think we're all just like, yeah, this that is what happened. Wonderful. I could listen to Tammy talk all day. Yeah, that was so good. Something that you said to me years ago um, at the well, one of our coffee and connections, I think was, you're like, what did I say? I'm scared. You've said so many things that have like impacted me so much in my life. And I feel like a lot of women like that you don't even know that you have, but that's just who you are. Um, and, and I think a part of why you started the well, which I want to talk about, but you said to me years ago, so many women who are mothers, uh, I, that's our first thing that we say when we are identifying ourselves, right? Like, well, I'm a mom and, uh, I'm a business owner or I'm, it's always mom first. And you always encouraged us to not say mom first. And there's which so much beauty it. in being a mother. Absolutely. It's just not, it's. It's something you did and it's great, but it's not you. everything. It's not primary. No, it's or not. It have you are to be. primary. Yeah. And that's what you taught me. Well, and so I, I very consciously, whenever, sorry, I, you know, have to do a bio or something like that. Mother's never first because I was me long before I was a mother. And you will be you long after. And what if you were to lose a child? Mm-hmm. Are you no longer have an identity? Mm-hmm. Do you no longer have an I who you are? Has that then what are you? Like, I just, there's so much to us. We're so, we're so beautiful without anything we've ever done. We don't need to do anything, anything Preach other than exist. Preach, Tammy. <laughs> it's true though. I You're so. Holy Spirit moment here. I, <laughs> we're here for it. We are. This is why you're such a great, like, this is why you're such a great leader who, <laughs> you're such a great leader who doesn't want to be in the limelight. <laughs> Right. But you have this really beautiful way of leading groups of women, um, but leading us into ourselves. So I keep hitting this, leading them into themselves or showing us that it's safe to be who you're, who you are. Or I'm just like, write that down. I'm just like, that was so, that was such a great quote. Well, the good news is it's recorded. Oh, right. You can listen to it. (laughs) This is like, what am I writing? I literally was like, (laughs) this is such a coffee and connection moment. We'll never get this back. Right, it's literally down. like recorded here, recorded here, recorded. We got it, Tammy. We got it. <laughs> but Tammy's also, write panicking. Can someone just write that down? Right. That leads us right into the yes. well and going. Yes. Connection. So please tell tell our listeners who may not know mm-hmm. what is the well and why did you start it? Because I've been a proud member since day one, and I want everybody to know about it. I know you are you are a well woman through and through. The well was created so women could show up at the table and be themselves. Really, that's why it was created, so that we could engage in conversation like this without judgment, without needing someone to be something for us, but we could just show up and be ourselves and and learn about ourselves through reflection from others. Because I think when you share your story and then people affirm you without telling you, oh, you should fix this or you should do that or you should do that differently, just let me share. I'm fine the way I am. And you're fine the way you are and you're fine the way you are and you're fine the way you are. And I love that we all have completely different opinions on this topic. So I think it was really started about just bringing women around the table for conversation. Very simple. Why is it called the well? Called the well for a few reasons. So one is that we didn't know what to name it. Love it. And we, so we both went separately and prayed and I saw a W and she opened up this magazine and read the scripture about the woman at the well. Mm, that's who, immediately what I thought when I heard the well. She came to the well and she was she was there and Jesus came. We're just going total Christian here for a second. So Jesus came and it was like, I know you. I see mm. you. I know everything about your life. I love you. I freaking love you. He said freaking. Just kidding. That's blasphemy. He didn't say that. <laughs> okay. He didn't say that. 
<laughs> Sorry, but JC, not Tammy in the is <laughs> rewriting <laughs> scripture. <laughs> JC, leave it up to Tammy. <laughs> Just like repentance change. Let's get back on track. So he, <laughs> so he just loved her, mm-hmm. and then she went, and she yeah. went, and she told her people, and they yep. all came and met him. And it's just this beautiful story of, of her story being a complete disaster. Yep. The woman's story was a mess. Yep. And he like gave her water, and sa- and essentially wasn't like it's okay. Keep doing that. He was like, you know, life's gonna be better if you change. Yep. Change your ways. Maybe don't do that. It's hurting you. You're hurting. So so anyways, it was this story of like seeing fully someone for who they are mm. and it being okay and being accepted and loved and met right where they're at and being like, hey, I see you. I love you. That's amazing. When you when the well, I always thought it was like wellness. Right, yeah, like it well, plays in which well. It, does. it plays in really good. I've yeah. actually even never thought about it. I'm just like Tammy's doing this thing. I'm on board. <laughs> yeah. No, that's immediately it. when I heard it, which was is well, hilarious. I thought that maybe it was like, oh, okay, but there's one more piece. Ooh, there's okay. one more piece. So that was the initial piece, and then what it, and then we sort of had like this vision. I don't know if it was me or Tamara or or what, but this vision of like the the oh, actual physical well, yeah, just being like filled with like women's stories mm. and you being able to like draw from them. Oh, that's and, beautiful. Like, and share. So, so we pour them in, we pour, we come and we pour our stories into the well and we like, and we become come filled up yeah. and then we go and the, the water, like we go and we go into our communities and our homes and it, it doesn't just impact us, Trickle but down. it impacts like everyone that we then encounter because, and we have this, I have this one funny story, this one member, I won't name names because it's, you know, just yep. the story. So she said that her husband would always send her there if she was like, in a bad mood Mm. you need to go to the well (laughs) you need to go to the well because you always come back and you're happy and you're in a good mood and like our home life is better it's true yeah it just it's like a renewing i always say like when when i didn't want to go or if i was just in a mood or like right if i didn't want to go i made myself go to coffee a connection because i always left feeling how i needed to feel i heard what i needed to hear i saw who i needed to see it's just like this magical yeah it's hard to explain you. it's it hard to hard market to it's hard to market yeah but that's okay because the right the people feels. will come yep and and it's okay for it to be slow yeah it's okay for it to grow slow i have a whole like note in my phone about slow growth it's okay it's okay a uh, good-hearted women it's hard to trust it's hard to trust that the well is what we say it is yeah. until you experience it. It's really hard to trust women for a lot of women. So and that's why I created it because I didn't feel like there was a place that I could go. So, well, and I think the other interesting piece for me as you're talking about this is, and, and maybe, I don't know if you would equate it to feeling like a calling for you to like do something, mm-hmm. but I feel like sometimes when we feel called wherever you're at is um, what's hard is when you feel called and then it doesn't like boom. Like for me personally, I know I feel that, that I'm like, well, I felt like this is what I was called to. And I felt like I'm supposed to do it. Why is it so slow? Like, shouldn't it be especially, and we can decide if we want to go here, but like God given, right? Like, why wouldn't I, why wouldn't this like take off? But sometimes it's like understanding that there's a more divine purpose for it than maybe what we see. I think that's been one of the hard things is I know that I was meant to be, do it, be a vessel for it. But I also know that with or without me it's happening like i'm yeah. i'm willing but like if not me it has to happen yeah. so somebody has to so i feel like this is funny is that so tamara and i started it tamara left and that's great like she needed to focus on her family she had young kids i was at a different stage i had when we started my daughter was going into grade one so mm-hmm. i had kind of like my every day mm-hmm. and then we brought on people. I just kept bringing, people just kept coming to support the well, to build the well. And they would come and they would go and they would come and they would go. And I had to like really get comfortable with loss yeah. and with being, and then I was like, is there something wrong with me? <laughs> that Like I don't leave. Like I just so need to see this vision carried forward. I just keep going with it. And it's still like that, right? Like I'm still just keep going, keep going. And women come and they help and they come alongside me. And it's not me. It's like the community Mm -hmm. building the community and all it's all the members. So I think that it's happening whether or not I'm, you know, like it's happening. Yeah. That's how it's kind of always felt like a force beyond me. Are you getting on the freight trainer? Are you getting on the train or not, Tammy? That's Mm -hmm. how I feel like you got your big going past you going or not you going, you going. Okay. 
then, I, then let's go. We just love hearing like your heart and, and about you and all of your different businesses. And the last thing that we want to ask to learn a little bit more about you, and this is a question we love to give uh, to our guests is, can you just tell us something that you're currently obsessed with? Oh my goodness. This is that hard question that you were, <laughs> I was like, I won't know what to say. <laughs> this is so funny. Tell us. So. I'm just really obsessed with doing fun things. Love it. <laughs> I just need to have fun. It's been yes. a lot of hard years mm-hmm. and I'm looking for things that are fun. Let's so if something like, like I'm just thinking about dinners, like I have a dinner tonight, Obahima's dinner tonight, outdoor dinner. Oh, fun. Like next week we're hosting well fed, like outdoor dinner. We're dressing up. We're going to get pictures taken. That's that's what I need. I just need to have some fun. Yeah. That's so amazing. I want to go to a fun dinner. We'll have to plan something. I'm obsessed with fun. Amazing. So if you can let the audience know where they can find you, if you want to drop some handles, some websites, go for it. Oh yeah. We'll have a few. So the, probably the easiest is just to go to my name, Tammy Zadunik on Instagram, because the well is connected there in our loom, my retreat company, which we didn't even get to, but it's all great because women gathering is what I do. And also my photography's on there and my mentorship program. So we got it all. She's got it all. She does it all. One stop <laughs> shop. Just go to my name. <laughs> Amazing. All right, Tammy, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining us on this episode of the Her Podcast. If you want to follow along with us, you can find us on Instagram and TikTok at its.her.podcast. We can't wait to see you there. Bye. 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 Adios.